Now, let's see if we can get this camera thing to work properly. I mean, the camera is working the way it should be, but the lighting is pretty damn awful. Except for highlighting the state of my hair. Hmm. Previously used adjectives might even apply. I will deal with that later. Now, what should I do? I have pondered this on a few occasions already. I've only had this PC with this camera for a week, a little over a week. But I have to find a better solution. Ah, oh, this is better already, isn't it? Ah, perfect, perfect. Or moving towards perfect. Here then. So, the only problem now is that I have to hold the laptop. I'm sitting here in my bed, naked. Um, I'm not going to show you what that is all about. Um, it's uh, 10 past 6 a.m. Thursday, April the 15th, 2020. Uh, I went to bed uh, around 3 a.m. Um, I had just come in uh, from having uploaded the previous uh, talk with myself to BitChute and YouTube and posted it on Facebook and uh, also sent the link to a uh, Scientology friend of mine, Anthony Phillips in Denmark. Shout out to you, Anthony. I like you a lot. Uh, when I woke up now, about half an hour ago, I had strong pain in my left knee. And this is a recurring issue. a very interesting issue. The first time I had that pain, I think, I was about hmm, I must have been 18. Although I think I, I have a notion that I must have been, no, I was I was younger still, um, but not by many years. Um, but I once had it during a transatlantic flight. Strong pain in the knee. And I likened it at the time to a nail, large nail being driven through my kneecap. That's what it felt like. Um, I was, of course, sitting in a cramped um, passenger seat on economy class, flying across the Atlantic. 
And the first time I did that was um, in August uh, 1983. I don't think it was on that flight. I think it was on one of the flights in the opposite direction. Hmm, what does that mean? I didn't tell you which direction I flew in the first time, but you might be able to figure that figure that out. It was from Copenhagen to Los Angeles, and then I've flown back from Los Angeles to Copenhagen, I suppose, or or some London airport maybe, or I don't think I flew directly to Oslo on those 747s. That was back in the 80s when I um, went to study in the US at uh, CSULB so um, that is kind of interesting to me now because that means uh, my alma mater is the same as that of Hmm, who's that? Oh, yes, um, that McDonald, Kevin McDonald. I think he is a professor at CSULB, or was. Uh, what's it called when you, when you remain your professor title uh, after you retired? Professor Emeritus, probably. Maybe he's not that old. Maybe he's still working, uh, lecturing and researching. He's certainly writing books all the time, isn't he? So I had this pain the, fr the first time on one of those flights, or maybe it was a little earlier in connection with my paper route here in Oslo. And I straightened out my knee. I had to rise up, raise up, rise up uh, from the seat. Um, and uh, that helped. That alleviated the pain. Now, fast forward very many years to um the christmas two years ago christmas 2017 and uh, i got this pain back i didn't think of it as a recurring pain then uh, it felt like a new phenomena um, I didn't connect or maybe I just didn't remember. Maybe it's not exactly the same pain or maybe it is. So I got this pain again uh, down in my knee and in my thigh um, on, on the The lateral, isn't that the outside, part of my thigh. So uh, I would lie on my uh, left side and have the pain underneath me. A burning pain, strong burning sensation coming in, um, what do you call it when you give birth? 
in Norwegian it's called uh, rir, one ri, several rir. Um, but it was there all the time, but then it would come on stronger uh, and that would keep kind of pulsing or well there's a pulse there but that is the regular pulse it can be felt strongly through the warmth of the pain but then uh, there would come uh, stronger bouts maybe that's the right word um, of pain sometimes very strong well I've had uh, a kidney stone back in 1995 um, during an Easter computer party in Stavanger here in Norway. Uh, and I was uh, I was actually housed uh, at um, at the home of um, internationally famed Scientology killer Andreas Heldal Lund. Shout out to you, Andreas! And um, uh, I got. Um, kidney stone and uh, those pains are famously known to be excruciating so uh, maybe not that strong but uh, this pain in my thigh and my knee uh, it came during sleep so I would wake up on my left side and I think also yes certainly sometimes on my right side so the pain would be on both sides uh, I don't know if the knee pain would be on both sides maybe but certainly the connected pain in the thigh muscle would be on both sides not at the same time, only on one side at a time. I would wake up on my left side or I would wake up on my right side with the strong pain there in the left thigh or the right thigh respectively. And what would I do? Well, I... realized that this was something that I need to work through. I'm just looking at the um, light seems to be fluctuating a bit uh, so should I move a bit a little bit? Yes the sun is already up. Should I avail myself of that light? What do you think? Here's my hair. Okay. And here's more of it. I have hair on both sides. Amazing hair. Here, here then. Or should I scoop, scoot, scoot over a bit? Like that. I mean, that is a very healthy light. So I like to stare into the sun. And, um, that is not a problem of course now it's very low but it's bright and white 
and I can stare at the sun even if it is as high as it gets up here in the north I leave on the 20 on the 62nd parallel that's where Oslo is I wonder there's another there are some other locations that are also located on the 62nd parallel I cannot look up look those up now but maybe in Moscow, maybe Vladivostok. Hmm. Okay, I shouldn't be shading myself, at least not my face, my body, not so important. Not for now, anyway. Back to the pain. Christmas 2017. And for a couple of weeks, I would be having this pain. Recurring very often, not every day, but many times a week and the paroxysm would go on for oh, maybe 20 minutes and up to could be a couple of hours and that is kind of terrible yes it is it is hard to endure um, hmm, hmm. lowering the laptop okay now it's not so hard to hold the laptop because um, my elbows are sustained by my thighs hmm. at that time i i endured the pain and i realized that this is um, this is uh, working material. This is uh, something that uh, uh, brings me along in my uh, evolution, in my self realization self-healing process and part of my applied sex economy work I shall um, narrate a video about sex economy and upload it so you don't you won't have to read uh, the document that I'm going to read to you um, I knew I wasn't finished with it when it stopped after a couple of weeks because um, I felt that I hadn't completely worked through the pain that was the thought I was having all the time that I have to this is something that is burning 
that has to be burnt up. That's it, it's a burning pain, and uh, I mean p pain is healing. It is a warning that something is wrong, but it is also healing. I can't talk uh, much about that because I I don't have the details. But um, I'm sure others have written doctoral thesis on that. Um, what I'm thinking uh, on the f purely physical level is that um, I have some beta amyloid complexes lodged down there and that they are uh, being burned up eventually through me enduring the pain because I can stop the pain easy I just have to move around, stretch my leg, rise from the bed into uh, into uh, vertical, um, and then the pain will go away. But then I will miss that opportunity of working the pain, and that is. That is the um, that is the topic of this video. That is why I I decided to make this video because it's not uh, I'm not going to uh, talk centrally about my pain. I'm going to talk about. Aquila Sakwa my Facebook friend and um, out of body emergency paramedic and um, rescue worker and I suspect also a bit of a um, spiritual vampire that is the topic I'm going to address in this video um, Maybe not a vampire of the really bad kind, but uh, I think I have identified an aspect of her work helping others that is problematic and uh, that I want to put the light on and we can discuss it I have no uh, hostile attitude toward Aquila um, she's a very interesting young woman with absolutely stunning abilities psychic abilities she can go out of body not just astrally but um, in a much uh, fuller way and she can go wherever she wants directed by her own volition 
So many people have you heard of who have experienced out of body ex uh, out of body travel or astral travel can do any such thing. Uh, you should check out her YouTube channel and uh, watch some of her videos and you'll be speechless with awe and admiration and uh, well she seems to be the real thing But there's an issue. Um, because she gains from her assisting others. And I'm not sure she um, informs her clients about that aspect of her work. If she does, then fine. There is no problem, but if she doesn't, um, the problem is as follows as I uh, have said about my own uh, pain it is a working opportunity inside that pain is uh, food for spiritual growth and physical healing. And when um, someone calls on Aquila to help them get rid of their problems, pains. She seems to be able to do that about as fast as you can And uh, the problem is resolved. Pain is gone. The entities um, are um, sent running away or released, given their freedom, because they are often in a bind also. But um, the issue is that Aquila gains a lot from this work. Um, she learns so much. She um, makes uh, acquaintances learns to know key people in the spiritual realms I say people I mean entities because they come in all shapes and sizes and 
strengths and some of them well some of them seem to be in distributed form like you have 10,000 of them and they make up a collective uh, I'm not sure if that means that there's always someone behind them so but she she learns so much uh, and um, she gets immensely empowered through her own work so what you might say it's not at it's not like it's at the expense of anyone she's helping people out and okay she's she gains a lot from doing that yes except that what she gains from those people were intended to be food for spiritual growth for those people, her clients. They had that pain, they had that issue, and um, they got it partly so that they could work it out and um, grow uh, on it, grow from it as uh, spiritual beings. And now Aquila has gone off with all of their food So she took out the, she took away their symptoms, and they certainly uh, became freer, happier, um, stronger. But that doesn't mean that um, that uh, they didn't lose something very important um, many people surely would choose to give away such uh, food so to speak, which tastes so bad, uh, even though they might lose some great benefit from it. Mm. Liken it to nutritional supplements. Um. Uh, but the uh, choice uh, should be uh, for those people to make and it should be an informed choice so um, what Aquila uh, should be telling her clients and as I said maybe she does But if she doesn't, she must begin to do so. She should tell them that this is something that is meant for you to work through. And um, uh, 
and uh, serve as uh, nourishment for your spiritual growth development. Even though it's hard and painful, um, people can be helped to deal with um, such problems in other ways than for some psychic healer or paramedic or adventurer um, to simply come in and um, remove it. No pain. So, um, what I would do if I had Aquila's abilities and was inclined to meddle with the sole issues of random other people um, I don't think I am but if I were I would certainly start out by informing them of the dynamic which I have just discussed and um, uh, in addition to making them realize the importance of the issue for um, as a potential uh, nourishment for their spiritual growth and healing process um, I might direct them, help them um, guide them uh, towards uh, information and techniques that they could use working the problem themselves and uh, if after having been explained about that to the best of my um, capability they still would want to be served a quick fix well then sure Aquila can do that I won't um, I'm just going to put it put it out but uh, there's um, there's this potentially sinister aspect to it and that is if Aquila does know that she is sort of uh, acting as a spiritual vampire the way she uh, conducts herself in her um, um, Well, client uh, oriented business currently. 
that would be bad. So, um, but um, she might not realize that, and she might also not realize the other things that I have said now, and she may think that now that, oh, you are right. You should be doing all of those things. I haven't. So far, I'm certainly going to do, do that from now on. And I'm going to include uh, it in my videos so that uh, people watching my videos will also understand fully all about this. How they themselves can work with their issues and uh, they can choose to uh, be assisted in working their own problem rather than simply having someone remove the problem quickly and fast. So, I'm wondering if there was something else I wanted to say. As I said, um, Aquila seems to be a really cool person. But um, uh, the final verdict for me, certainly, um, must await her response to this video. So um, I think I'll end it here. And uh, I guess. I will receive a video response on your channel, Aquila. Bye for now all. And uh, comment below. Keep in touch.